Today, we're going to be taking a look at exposing custom metrics for applications running in Kubernetes using Prometheus. In this video, we'll be taking a look at all the building blocks you need to learn in order to facilitate this. We'll take a look at how to expose custom metrics in Python, Node.js, .NET, and Go. Then we'll add a metrics endpoint. We'll then take that application and deploy it to Kubernetes. Then we'll deploy a Prometheus instance and start scraping our application. So straight to the point, without further ado, let's go. To get metrics, our application needs a Prometheus library. There is a Prometheus library available for most programming languages. Then you use the library to instrument the code to get the metrics you want, like request per second, request latency, counters, and histograms. The library will give you a metrics endpoint. We will then use Prometheus to scrape this endpoint periodically to collect the metrics. So if we go to GitHub and we take a look at my GitHub repo, all the code and examples we take a look at today will be in this repo. Now today we'll be taking a look at the monitoring folder. In the monitoring folder, we have a Prometheus folder with a bunch of example applications. We have a .NET application, a Go application, Node.js application, and a Python application. Each of these programming language examples have source code and a Docker file. If we take a look at the Python, we can see it has source code in here and a Docker file. The Node.js has source code here and a Docker file. The Go application has a main.go for the source and a Docker file. The .NET application has a source folder with source code and a Docker file. And you can take a look at the programming language of your choice to get an example app up and running. To make the build process simple for this, I created a Docker Compose file. And in that Compose file, I have all the example applications listed. I've got the Go application and how to build it. I've got the Python application and how to build that. I've got the .NET one and we have the Node.js one. I also have examples on running Prometheus locally to scrape these applications locally, as well as a Grafana instance with a Grafana dashboard container to populate some sample dashboards. But in this video, we'll skip the local Prometheus and Grafana as we're going straight to Kubernetes. And then in the GitHub repo under the monitoring Prometheus folder, not only do we have our applications, but we also have a Kubernetes folder. And in this Kubernetes folder is a lot of guides on how to deploy Prometheus into Kubernetes for different versions. So we'll be taking a look at that as well. So be sure to check the link down below for the source code so you can follow along. But before we continue, just a quick word from our sponsor who made this video possible. When you hear of Kubernetes, you most likely heard of YAML files. And when you hear of YAML files, you probably think thousands of lines, hundreds of files, lots of complex Helm charts and customized templates. Two things come to mind here, human errors and misconfiguration. Now, thankfully, there is a free and magical open source utility that helps us solve these challenges, and it's called Detree. Detree is a tiny command line app that helps us test our YAML files. It checks our YAML for broken YAML syntax, for valid Kubernetes schema, and also helps enforce and checks policies, and also helps manage these policies from a dashboard. You can even run Detree in your Git GitHub Action Pipeline and prevent your precious pipeline from running if any YAML misconfiguration or policy issues are detected as the tree supports multiple CI/CD workflows. The tree also ships in the form of a Kubernetes webhook which can run the tree every time resources are applied to your cluster. This means the tree can run at every stage of our software delivery workflow. It can run checks locally in our CI pipeline during deployments and also run against resources that are already deployed end to end. The tree also supports Helm, has native customized support, lots of official integrations, as well as community plugins like VS Code. This video is proudly sponsored by Detree. Check out the link down below for my full Detree tutorial. Now without further ado, back to my custom metrics. Now there are three high level components that we need to learn here. Firstly, we need to be able to add metrics endpoints to our applications, run them locally to make sure it works. 
actually make sure our application is writing metrics to the metrics endpoint. Secondly, we have to have a Kubernetes cluster running somewhere that has the Prometheus operator installed. In my latest Kubernetes monitoring video, we cover this using the Q Prometheus stack. Check out the link down below on how to monitor Kubernetes. So we have an application with metrics and we're gonna have a Kubernetes cluster where the application is running as well as a Prometheus instance inside there which will scrape the application. The third part that we need to learn is how to configure Prometheus to actually scrape our application. To do this, we'll need to understand the concept of service monitors. I've done a video on service monitors in the link down below. So make sure you understand the fundamentals of monitoring Kubernetes with the Prometheus operator as well as understanding service monitors. So let's start with the first part, getting a metrics endpoint in our app with some metrics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going into the monitoring Prometheus folder and in this example, in this video, I'll take a look at the Python application, take a look at the source code and we'll look at server.py which is the source code for this hello world application. Be sure to check out the other folders for the other examples on other programming languages but the concept is very simple and the same across all of the different languages. You can see here in the code, we've imported the Prometheus client library. We got that from the requirements TXT by installing the Prometheus client 014.1. Most programming languages have a Prometheus library available. There'll be a NuGet package for .NET. In Go, we can use Go get. In Node.js, we have npm install. In Python, we have pip install. So there are two major metrics in Prometheus. One is called a counter and the other one is called a histogram. Histogram is useful if you're doing timings like in this case I'm doing request duration in seconds so how long did my application take to respond or process data or make an external call maybe a call to a database or some kind of storage so think of a histogram as a timer we can time certain things in our application and counters is for operations we want to count so how many time did this function execute that's good for something like requests per second so you can see in my simple hello function that I have here I do two things I start a timer and then I sleep to simulate that I'm doing some kind of processing and then I end the timer and then I do is access my histogram and call the observe function and pass in a time which is how long this hello function took to execute. And for counters, what I do is I access my counter and I simply increment the counter. So this will count every time this function gets hit and give us requests per second. Then what we do is we actually create a metrics endpoint. Now for some programming languages, it'll automatically create a metrics endpoint for you. So for Python, we have to do this manually and the documentation tells you how to do it and it's pretty simple. All we do is create a result dictionary, we loop through the graphs, which is all our counters and histograms we've created at the top. We append this to the graph and we write it to the response as plain text. This will give us a metrics endpoint in our application that Prometheus can scrape. It'll print out all the counters and histogram data. To quickly run through a .NET example, if you open up the .NET source code, I've instrumented one of the pages under index.cshtml.cs. On the get of this page, I create a counter at the top to say .NET request operations total. So I create my counter at the top of the class and then all I need to do is increment that counter similar to Python every time this method gets called. So every time we hit this index page in the browser it'll increment this counter and similarly for request duration we start a timer we then create a histogram from that timer and then we log the histogram by saying histogram.observe and we write the total seconds from the timer that has passed. So this will write a metric how long this function took. Now I can use the docker compose file to build this application and to run it and that's very simple. I'm going to change folder to the monitoring Prometheus folder and in here I have the docker compose file as we can see. We can either say docker compose build and build all of them or we can grab the application name that we want to build. So to build that I can say docker compose build pass in the name which is python application. Go ahead and run that that will build the application application container. And while that is building, if we take a look at the Python application, it's going to run and expose port 81. And inside the container, the application actually runs on port 5000. And now that that is built, we can go ahead and run the application. And that's very simple. That's just docker compose up and the name of the application. 
that will go ahead and run our application. You can see it's running on port 5000 in the container. And if I open up the browser, we're listening on port 81 on our local, which is exposed by Docker Compose. If I go ahead and hit this a number of times, we can see we've got a Hello World application running. And if I go to slash metrics, this will access the metrics page. So you can see here we have Python request operations total. So we've hit this page six times. And here you have the request duration second bucket as well. So with these metrics, you can calculate the time spent where customers had to wait for a response of our application. So now that we have a metrics endpoint in our application, our application is ready to be deployed to Kubernetes. The next step is to actually deploy a Kubernetes cluster and make sure we have that cluster ready for monitoring. And to get this running, we'll be following my guide on how to monitor Kubernetes. We'll get the Q Prometheus stack deployed so that we can deploy the Prometheus operator. Once we have that, we'll use that to create one Prometheus instance, which will monitor our applications. Now to install a Prometheus instance, we need the Prometheus operator. And to get that, we deploy a solution called Cube Prometheus, which is on GitHub. And that's the fundamental foundation of monitoring Kubernetes. There is a Cube Prometheus version for every version of Kubernetes. So we have to make sure we pick the right one. If you're new to Kubernetes monitoring, make sure you check the link down below on how to monitor your Kubernetes cluster. So in my latest monitoring guide, under monitoring in Prometheus folder, we have a Kubernetes folder with Kubernetes 1.0. 1.23. That is the latest version of the monitoring guide that we've done on Kubernetes. There's a readme file in there. And this readme file will tell you how to monitor Kubernetes 1.23. If you have a newer version of Kubernetes, the process is fairly straightforward. There is a repo on GitHub called QPrometheus by the Prometheus operator. And if you scroll down, this is the QPrometheus repo, which has all the fundamentals of monitoring a Kubernetes cluster and gives you the Prometheus operator so you can go ahead and install Prometheus instances and service monitors to scrape your applications. It gives you the Prometheus operator, highly available Prometheus, highly available alert manager, and a bunch of other things that's pretty cool. If you scroll down, this is the important part. If if you have a newer version of Kubernetes or an older version, you need to make sure you pick the right release for your Kubernetes version. In this demo, we have the Kubernetes 1.23 and I've picked release 10. So make sure you check out the right release of the source code and then you can follow the quick start guide on how to apply the manifests directory. There's also a Helm chart available for this as well. So I've already done all the heavy lifting in my Kubernetes monitoring guide. So we change directory to the monitoring folder, Prometheus, Kubernetes 1.23. Go ahead and change directory to that. And then what I'm going to do is create a small Kubernetes cluster we can use for testing. And I'm going to use a utility called Kind because it allows me to create lightweight Kubernetes clusters in lightweight Docker containers. Very easy to spin up, very easy to spin down. And you can run multiple clusters side by side. I say Kind create cluster. I call this cluster monitoring and I'm going to pass in Kubernetes 1.23.1 and a config for Kind. If I go ahead and run this, this will spin up my Kubernetes cluster. And if we take a look at this kind.yaml, it's a simple one master, three worker node Kubernetes cluster. And it's as simple as that. This will go ahead and prepare our nodes, configure our cluster, join all the nodes. And now we have a Kubernetes cluster up and running. I can do kubectl get nodes. And now look, we've got a four node Kubernetes cluster up and running. Now, as I mentioned in my monitoring guide, we use the Kube Prometheus repo. And under here, we've got the compatibility matrix and we've chosen release 0 0.10. If you click into that, what you're going to need is the manifest folder. The manifest folder has all the YAML you're going to need. It has a setup directory. The setup directory will have a bunch of custom resource definitions and a namespace, which we need to apply first. Once we have the setup directory applied, we go ahead and apply all the remaining YAML. That'll give us the fundamentals of monitoring that we need for Prometheus and Kubernetes. Now I've already done that heavy lifting and I've pulled that manifests folder into our GitHub repo over here. So you can see under 1.23, we have manifests. We've got all all the YAML as well as the setup directory YAML. So all I need to do is two things. Firstly, set up the custom resource definitions by saying kubectl create and applying the setup directory. So I go ahead 
and run that, that will run the setup directory and store all of those custom resource definitions and it will create a monitoring namespace and all the resources will go in the monitoring namespace. Secondly, we have to set up the manifest. So this is very simple. We apply all the remaining YAML by saying kubectl create and applying the manifest directory. Go ahead and run that and that will deploy all the remaining components. Then while that's getting up and running, we can go ahead and monitor it by running the kubectl get pods command in that new monitoring namespace. I go ahead and run that and we can see that everything is starting to create. So we have black box exporter. We've got a Grafana dashboard, which will have pre-populated dashboards for monitoring pods and nodes in our Kubernetes cluster. It also has kube state metrics, which is an essential metric server for Kubernetes. We have node exporter, which is a daemon set, which will extract metrics for every node in our cluster. We've got Prometheus adapter plus the Prometheus operator. And if I wait a couple of seconds and I do kubectl in the monitoring namespace get pods again, we can see everything is now up and running and ready to go. We can quickly view the dashboards if you haven't seen them already by port forwarding to the Grafana instance on port 3000. If you run this port forward command, it'll port forward to the Grafana instance. You can then access localhost 3000 to get to the Grafana instance and the default credentials is admin admin. Go ahead and log in and you'll see a bunch of dashboards already deployed for you. These are all the pre-populated dashboards you can use to monitor nodes and pods in your cluster. So now we have containerized apps with metrics endpoints. We have a Kubernetes cluster with monitoring capabilities and it has the Prometheus operator installed. Now, next up, we have three steps. The first step is to deploy our example application to Kubernetes so that we can scrape the metrics endpoint. The second step is to deploy a Prometheus instance, which will configure to monitor and scrape our application metric endpoints. And thirdly, I'll show you how to configure this Prometheus instance to scrape our custom application. Now to do all of this, we'll use the Prometheus operator to do two things. We'll deploy a Prometheus instance by using the Prometheus operator. And we'll do this by writing a small YAML file that tells the operator that we want a Prometheus pod. Then we'll write another small YAML file, which is basically called a service monitor. This tells the Prometheus operator to configure our newly created Prometheus to scrape our application. Service monitor is a small YAML file that helps us configure Prometheus instances. A service monitor defines what we want and how we want Prometheus to scrape our application. If you're new to service monitors, check out the link down below to my introduction to service monitors. So to create a Prometheus instance and deploy a service monitor to monitor our application, we can take a look at my service monitor guide example. In my GitHub repo under Kubernetes, I have a service monitors folder with a readme. And this is my introduction to service monitors, which takes a look at creating a Kubernetes cluster deploying the Kube Prometheus stack, everything we've already done. So we look at creating our own Prometheus instance, which we'll use to scrape our metrics from our applications. We then deploy our example app, which will deploy our Python application to Kubernetes. And then we'll deploy a service monitor, which will configure that Prometheus instance to scrape our custom application. So in this introduction to service monitor readme, if we scroll down, we've already created a Kubernetes cluster. So we can skip that. We've already deployed kube prometheus and the monitoring components so we can go ahead and skip that we have viewed the dashboards so we can skip that what we need is our own prometheus instance so in the monitoring namespace i'm going to deploy a prometheus instance by saying kubectl apply in the monitoring namespace and deploy a prometheus yaml file going to go ahead and run that in the meantime and if we take a look at that yaml it's under the kubernetes service monitors folder we have a prometheus.yaml it's called applications so we can keep this Prometheus separate from other Prometheus instances. It's going to be one replica. We set some resource requests and we configure this Prometheus to look at all service monitors in the default namespace. So we can tweak this Prometheus instance to only look for certain service monitors. And inside of the default namespace, it will select all service monitors. So that is how we configure Prometheus instances so that it knows where to look for service monitors. Now, once we've deployed it, we can say kubectl in the monitoring namespace get pods, and we should see a new Prometheus instance called Prometheus applications dash zero, and that's running in the monitoring namespace. Now to test that Prometheus instance, we can port forward to it by running the port forward command. So we can port forward to that pod on port 
90 go ahead and run that that'll port forward to the prometheus pod i can then go to localhost 1990 in the browser and now we can see we've hit the prometheus instance take a look at status take a look at service discovery and notice that it's empty that is because there are no service monitors deployed in the default namespace yet or potentially our prometheus is misconfigured and it's looking at the wrong namespace so make sure you configure your prometheus correctly so to get some entries in the service discovery section of Prometheus, this is where service monitors come in. Service monitors help us configure Prometheus to tell it what to scrape. Now to deploy a service monitor in my Prometheus service monitors folder, I have a service monitor.yaml. And in here, this is what a service monitor YAML looks like. Kind of service monitor. It has a name. We're going to deploy it to the default namespace. And we basically just point it to a service. We do this by setting a label selector. So we tell the service monitor to select all services in the default namespace that have this label. So when we deploy our application with our custom metrics, that application will have a Kubernetes service with the label called app example app. And it also needs an endpoint. The Kubernetes service for that example app will need a port called web. So let's go ahead and deploy that service monitor and see what it does. I say kubectl in the default namespace because that's where I'm going to be deploying my applications in this example i apply the service monitor.yaml file go ahead and run that that will apply the service monitor and it may take some time to reflect in prometheus we can port forward back to the prometheus instance and give it some time to populate i gave it some time and now my service monitor entry is showing up in the service discovery section but notice that it has zero out of one active targets that is because there are no targets if i go to status and targets there are no targets coming up and why is that well we can see under service discovery that it's picking up our service monitor but the service monitor is pointing to a service that doesn't exist yet. Now to get the service into the cluster, we're going to deploy our example application. If we take a look at my GitHub repo under Kubernetes service monitors, we have an example app folder, and this is the deployment YAML and the service YAML for the example apps we've taken a look at earlier. So if I look at the deployment.yaml, this is a simple Kubernetes deployment. It's going to run two pods and it's going to run the Python metrics application, the same container I launched earlier. And it's also exposing port 5000 as we saw earlier so this is a simple yaml file describing how to deploy our application to kubernetes and if we take a look at the service.yaml this is a service that will expose that application so this service is called example service it's a private service because type is cluster ip it has a port on it which the name is called web it exposes port 80 and the target port is 5000 now we can go ahead and deploy this example app by saying kubectl apply in the default namespace and apply the example app folder. Go ahead and run that. That will deploy the application as well as the service to our Kubernetes cluster. Now the key parts here is exposing this application because we have this Kubernetes service.yaml. This will expose port 80 and map it to 5000. And if we take a look at my service monitor and I bring it side by side with the Kubernetes service, we can see the service monitor is designed to select all services with this label. And if we take a look at our service, it has that label. It's got metadata label app equals example app. So the label matches. So the service monitor will correctly pick up the service based on the label. We also have a port mapping because in here we have endpoints and we are specifically looking for port where the name of the port is web. If we take a look at our Kubernetes service, we have a port here, which its name is web. So this tells the service monitor exactly which service to scrape based on the label and tells at which port to scrape if you have multiple ports. So now after giving it some time, I can go ahead and port forward back to our Prometheus instance. And now if I refresh, we can see the service discovery has started populating some targets. If I go to status and targets, we can see now our targets are up and running here. If I refresh this, we can see we have two pods, they're both up. And this is because our service monitor now picks up the service and it configured Prometheus correctly to scrape that service. I can go to the Prometheus page and I can type in Python and we can see that our metrics are now coming through.
And that is how you get custom metrics from your application into Prometheus running in Kubernetes. Hopefully this video helped you understand all the fundamentals and the metrics ecosystem of getting metrics from your applications into Prometheus. Now let me know down in the comments what sort of challenges you're facing when it comes to metrics for application and what sort of videos you'd like me to cover in the future. Now remember to like and subscribe and hit the bell. And if you want to support the channel even further be sure to check the Patreon link down below or click the join button to become a YouTube member. Now, as always, thanks for watching and until next time, peace.